We gather this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We gather in the name of the one who said, you want me to go because I will send one to come, a comforter, a Holy Spirit. The one whom John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with fire and Holy Spirit. So that's the, the reason why we're gathered here. Now this morning, we have a lot of different ways to worship God and show our devotion to God. We're going to have a confirmation. We're going to see water and how that water is a symbol of Holy Spirit. You also have a symbol of Holy Spirit in your hand. And let me explain to you what these are. Um, so some people grow up and they're comfortable with saying amen out loud and other, <laughs> other people are just wanting to mm, nod. This is Pentecost, okay? This is the day of the birthday of the church. It's also a, a fulfillment of a promise. So let me explain to you what I want you to do with these. Anytime that you feel like you want to say amen, wave it. Anytime that you hear the word holy or spirit or God or wind or breath, anything like that, wave it. Anytime that we're singing, wave it. Anytime that you feel the Holy Spirit at work within your life and you want to praise God, wave it. Today is, a, is, is the day in which we move our bodies and we make sound. If you'll listen, y'all probably can't pick it up at home, cross gates at home, but everybody grab, your, everybody grab your, your, your ribbon and wave it. Y'all hear that? And there, and there came what appeared to be the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And suddenly tongues of fire were above their heads. And they wondered what was going on. And now many of you are wondering, what's going on? That's what we're doing. A sign, a symbol of God's holy presence, of God's fire, of God's greatness and God's glory. As we gather now, not only in the name of Jesus, we gather in the energy and the power and the wind and the breath of God, whom we call Holy Spirit. Oh God, come to us now that we may worship you fully with everything that we are. If you will stand with me as we do our responsive call to worship. I'm going to see if you're paying attention. In the last days it shall come to pass, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. <clears throat> and there appeared to them tongues as a fire distributed and resting on each of them. Please join in our opening hymn of praise.
of welcoming Joseph into the life of this church, if you will turn to in the hymnal to page 33, and you'll follow along from there when it's time. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant God declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present now Joseph Kale Boackle for confirmation. Joseph, I invite you to come up here, and I also invite any family members who want to come, and Rich, as his faith friend, if you would come up here, um, Sherry, Cam, as a representative of the student ministry in which he will be coming. I invite us all to gather together around the symbols of Holy Spirit. So... Joseph, you and I and your dad had a conversation in my office on Thursday, um, one in which your mother was supposed to have been video called in, but we forgot because we were having so much of an honest good time. Church, I need y'all to understand something about this time. You know, it's not what we say we know that saves us. Now, there is an important truth to understanding that which we're stepping into. And Joseph, when, when we were going through the vows and I was asking you, what, what, is, what do you hear? Sherry, I need you to know something that whatever y'all have been doing in the lives of these children, Holy Spirit must have been the one doing it. Because there were times when, Paul, you and I looked at each other and was like, Holy Spirit is giving you the ability to say what you're saying. There is an amazing power of, of, of Holy Spirit transforming you already, working in you. And church, I want to affirm that and confirm that in what I have seen in my conversations with him. And so I want to ask you those questions again, and I want you to proclaim them publicly now to the church. So on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin, if you do, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful member, a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If you will, say, I will. So sponsors and faith friends, I ask you, will you support and encourage him in his Christian life? If you will, say, I will. So congregation, we don't do this alone. We do it together. So I ask you, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If you do, say, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will su surround him with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow into trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. So we do acknowledge that we believe something. We don't just believe in an idea of God. We don't believe in any example of Jesus that someone wants to give us. We actually know what we believe and we know how we um, define what we mean by these words. So church, this is true of us as well. So I ask you, and you come stand next to me so you can actually say these with me. So church and Joseph, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in
Do you believe in Holy Spirit? So may the Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, and you saw your people as slaves in Egypt. You led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's work to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns forever. Amen. This is water. Remember, water is just the symbol and the sign of something deeper. Water is a, a sign of cleansing. It's a sign of death if you're fully immersed in it. It's a sign of washing. It's a sign of renewal and refreshment. This water is a symbol that we receive from the scriptures, from John the Baptist, as a way to prepare ourselves for the one who is to come. But what's important, Joseph, and for all of us, is that this is simply water. The one who comes after is able to baptize us with Holy Spirit and fire, the very presence of God with us. So you were baptized when you were much younger. Many of us in here were baptized when we were much younger. Some of us weren't. We were baptized when we were older, when we made our profession of faith and our baptism at the same time. What we want to acknowledge is Water just gets you wet. What we're affirming today is that Holy Spirit has come upon you to save you and to renew you and to make you like new the way that God intended. And so this water here, I invite you to put your hand in it with me. Grab it. Touch this water. Anytime that you touch water, anytime we talked about you like to swim, right? Every time you get in that water, Church, any time you have water, remember that you are baptized. Not specifically the circumstances of where the water came from, but don't you ever forget that you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, affirmed, overwhelmed, filled with light and life of God. So remember that you are baptized and be thankful that God has called you by name. Joseph, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water in the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sherry, you have, before we go uh, much further, we have signs and symbols that um, want to explain to the church what we have here. Um, we have a certificate of just a reminder of this day. So that's for him to remember. But we have a, a stole, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but we did a confirmation retreat, and all of the confirmands took a stole and put on it things that were important to them. I like this word up here, y'all. He put the word koinonia. Koinonia is the Greek word that described the fellowship of the body of Christ when it was brand new. And it was a way of fellowshipping with one another, a way of caring for one another. I noticed that you have Acts 2 on here. I'm very impressed with your deep knowledge and understanding. Your family, your friends, along with other church members. A stole represents a yoke. 
a yoke that Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. And he comes up under it with us and carries us. So your signs and your symbols represent to me something much deeper, that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and has worked already in you to make you into what God intended. So now, though, we want to receive you into this church, and we have words that I want you to respond to, and then I'm going to ask the congregation to join in a little bit later. So I want to ask you, Joseph, as a member of Christ Universal Church, all of this and all of this and all of that, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If you will, say, I will. Now this congregation called Crossgates, as a member of this congregation, Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, if you will say, I will. Members of the household of God, of which you are now fully a part of, I commend Joseph to you, to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you that you may live in grace and in peace. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. And they waved their Holy Spirit banners too. Um, Joseph, you may return to your seat with your family but now as a full member of this church, of this body. And as we talked about, you and your dad and I, we talked about how we don't always know exactly what we've said, but we know we said something important. In the same way that when we say, I do. If we don't say, I do, the next day and the next day and the next day, marriage becomes difficult. In the Christian life, if we don't say, I do, every day, and if you don't have faith friends like Rich behind you to help transition you from the, the children's ministries of our church to the student ministries of our church, it's going to get difficult. I want you to come here with me and I want you to look out. Do you see everybody out here? Everybody out here is your biggest fan. Everybody out here is a brother and sister. And their hope for you is that you will show them how to be a disciple of Jesus Christ by your words, by your life, by your smile, by your actions and your love. This church loves you. Don't you ever forget that, okay? Amen. Church, I'm gonna leave this um, water here. When we come later and receive communion, I'm inviting y'all to come and y'all put your hand in that water too and remember what? The specifics of your baptism? No. Remember that you are baptized by Holy Spirit in water and with fire. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, and the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, 
Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Next is a reading from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit hearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. A reading for the people of God. As children of God, we know this table because we know it's the Lord's table. But there is still an invitation to be given. It's from Christ our Lord who invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live at peace with one another. It's a table with plenty for everyone. It's a table for all who call upon the name of the Lord. It's a table for all of us who now confess together. Almighty God, you poured your spirit on the disciples and all the people around creating open ears and a new community of faith. We confess that we ignore your spirit in our lives. No, we actively resist and we are ashamed. We don't listen for your words of grace, speak of your love, or live as a people who are one in Christ. Please have mercy on us. Transform us by the refining fire of your spirit. It is in these words of comfort, in these words of confession, that we find words of comfort. So hear these words of comfort from Jesus. He says, peace I leave with you, and my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Jesus offers peace, love, and forgiveness of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As a reconciled and restored people, as a Holy Spirit-filled people, as those of us who are filled with this oneness of the Spirit of God, we pray. 
I'm going back here to check and make sure we don't have people who have put something on the prayer book. But we come together in the name of Jesus as a reconciled people to make an offering. To make an offering of money, sure. To make an offering of ourselves, yes. We do that here at Crossgates by first offering our hearts through prayer. So here in our prayer book, which we offer, we have the names Stephen Brown and Garner Morris. I lay these here. It's a first fruit of a reconciled people who know that we can be vulnerable with one another, who know that we can join each other in prayer and cry out to one another. So in light of that, fire in us, the wholeness in us through Christ, let us now pray. Holy God, we cry out to you, come Holy Spirit, move over us, in us, through us, call us together so that we may move together with you in step as you're at work. Oh God, now in this time of worship and pausing to confess and to hear the forgiveness that we have in your son, we acknowledge that we want so much more. And oh, holy God, so do you. A wholeness and a peace, a shalom to cover the world, a true light and life to come into the hearts of all of us. So God, as we, your people, gathered here at home and all around the world, remember this day of a promise kept from days of old that you would make your dwelling place among your people. So God, in praise and in thanksgiving, in hope and in expectation and a deep, deep, deep commitment to continue this day moving forward to be a transformed, refined people through the Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. As a reconciled people, we talk about oneness. Here, we want to demonstrate that oneness by going and passing the peace of Christ, announcing something to one another. To go to one another and say to them, your sins are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let's be one in the Lord. Something like that. We get up and go, and while we're going, we have a place for your offering, some boxes along the side and some ushers to help if you need help getting there. But let's do those two together because that's what Jesus taught us to do. When we're standing at the altar to make our offering, if we realize we have something broken between us, let's go and make it right. So come on, Crossgates, let's go pass the peace of Christ to one another.
God of power, open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts with the wisdom and revelation of your spirit. Help us to hear your voice, to see your ways, and to receive with truth, with joy, your truth. Amen. You may be seated. Let us stand together now for the reading of our gospel. We stand because we want to pay extra attention. We stand because we want to make sure we pay attention if the Holy Spirit comes upon us while we hear this word. This is John chapter 14. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you don't, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, 
This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So many words, so little time. What is this day really about? Is it about just the color red or waving signs and symbols? Is it just a one-time experience in which something weird happened and none of us really knew what it was, but we talk about it 2,000 years later and say, wow, something really weird happened and we're glad it did, but we don't know what it is. Some of us grew up in churches that had Pentecostal in it. Some of us have had our own Pentecostal moments. Some of us have been filled with a spirit And we said things we didn't understand, and we did things with power that we didn't fully comprehend. But where are we right now in the story is what I want to just pause for a short moment of time and invite you into something that is simply amazing. This is such an important cosmic event, Pentecost, an undoing of that which is bound up, the end of the beginning and the beginning of the end. So here's Pentecost, ready? It's in plain sight. It's been 50 days after Passover, 50 days since crucifixion, since resurrection. The people are gathered for Shavuot, for the Feast of Weeks, where they gather together and they come and they celebrate the abundance of God through the the, the harvest of their wheat. And they're excited and they're waving the grains in the air and they're giving thanks to God. But they're also remembering of the giving of the Torah on Sinai, where God showed up in fire and smoke. So here they all are gathered together. And it's been 40 days, right? 40 days of resurrection sightings. It's only been 10 days ago that Jesus ascended up to the Father. He said to them, I want you to go and wait in Jerusalem for a promise to be kept, a promise from the Father, a baptism from Holy Spirit and fire. And there they were 10 days later on this important day of God's blessing and abundance, waving their grain, remembering when God came down and offered words of life. And there they all were gathered for that because Jesus told them to wait Something wonderful is about to happen. One age was ending. We heard it on crucifixion, on that dark Friday. What happened when Jesus died? Do you all know what happened when Jesus died? The ground shook. Do you all know what happened in the temple? The thing that separates the ordinary people where God is, where God encounters the worst of our sin, what happened to that barrier? Do y'all know? Someone tell me what happened. One of y'all know. It was torn from the top to the bottom. It was torn and split apart. The end of the age had come. No more will God encounter God's people in that space. No more will blood be sprinkled on a mercy seat. Jesus Christ becomes forever the place where God encounters us and our sin. But it didn't just end there. That's not the end of our story. That's not what Jesus told us. Crossgates here and at home, listen Listen to the, thing, to the fact that the world has changed. It's different now. Because the way the world used to work, the old age, a sacrifice had to be made all the time, over and over. 
But this time, God's own son was the sacrifice. The tearing apart of the separation is over. But is that the end? No, it's not. Because that age ended, a new age began. And God's original purpose was restored. You see, God created us as humans to live where? Fully in God's presence. To be anywhere other than the presence of God is to be in death. We're not designed to live apart from God. We're not designed to be away. And we're not designed to be away and separate from one another. How, God, will you do this? God put a plan in motion. I'll start with two people, Abraham and Sarah, and I'm going to bless everyone through them. And if my people will come from them, I will empower them to be priests and go into the world, but they failed. They still didn't do it, but God didn't fail. God said, I'm going to do this. And a temple was built, one building, where God's glory would come and encounter God's people. But that didn't work because the people still turned away. And the prophets whispered about the future and said, unless you come and turn our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh, unless your spirit pour out on us, unless you come and give us life, we will not survive. We will not make it. So what's up with wind and fire? What is that all about? My uh, Bible project group that we meet with, we've, we've gone through this. I'm looking at some of y'all. I think what Luke was trying to say here at the beginning of Acts was God's present glory is noisy and it's fiery and it's just like Ezekiel. That time when God was about to do something that shook the ground. You see, God's people had wandered away. They were destroyed. The temple was destroyed by evil people because they were evil. Did God abandon them? God did not. You know what God did? God sent angels a vision of a son of man there, and there a fiery presence emerged, someone like a son of man. And these winged creatures showed up with four faces, and they made wheels, and they picked up God's glory, his throne, and basically put it on a big lift and drove it over to where God's people were in exile. God joined God's people over in exile and said, I'm not done, I'm not giving up on you. I'm gonna pour out myself. But every, every time that glory moved, when God's cosmic lift truck showed up, you know what it sounded like? A rush of water. And there was fire everywhere. Do you now understand maybe what was happening on Pentecost? Do you understand that what was happening was not some one-off thing? It was a reminder that where is God's glory going to dwell now? In you. And God says, here I am. Listen, whoosh, wind, noise, his presence, his glory dwells now where? In a hidden room of a temple? No. In human hearts. So God's presence glory is noisy, it's confusing, it's fiery, but where does the Spirit of God now dwell? In human hearts, by faith, like it was in the garden. You see, Pentecost is a promise kept. Don't worry anymore. God's going to transform. Gonna start with you. God's going to fill this room, blow open the doors, and when you go out into the world, they're going to be ready to hear what you have to say. And on that day, 5,000 people said, I hear and I respond. So what does this mean right now? Today, it's the same as it did then. We are children of God. We are where God abides. God is here in this beautiful space, not because the beautiful space, but because you beautiful people are in this beautiful space. And on Pentecost, we are reminded that we are God's children, that we are transformed, we are renewed, 
that God has put an end to something and begun something new. So don't you ever forget that God's glory has shown up, has called you, has empowered you to go into the world. A world that won't fully understand what you're doing, but will push you, drive you into a world that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he returned away. He turned away the temptation of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. When the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, we are the children of God. And with the confidence of children of God, let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is only one loaf, we who are many are one body. So the loaf that we break is a sharing of Jesus' love for us. This cup that we share is a cup of His poured out love for us. So now we invite people to a table that doesn't belong to us. This is not our table, my table, Crossgate's table. It's not even United Methodist Church's table. It's the Lord's table. And he bids us come, take, receive, because we are his brothers and sisters. We are children of the Father. So I invite those who are going to come and help me serve, if you would please come forward now. There is some hand sanitizer down front. We're going to follow our normal uh, mode of intinction. For those of you who are guests here, what that means is you'll come forward down one of the, down this aisle or this aisle, you'll exit this way or this way, come to the closest station and you will hear someone say to you, here's the body of Christ. You can say, thanks be to God. They'll be there with the cup and they'll say the blood of Christ shed for you and you can say thanks be to God. I invite you to be careful not to stick your fingers down too far that you get your hands in the cup. But let's receive this beautiful offering, a beautiful symbol that we are God's children and this beautiful promise that Jesus said, you want me to go so the Holy Spirit can come, but I need you to know that I'm going to go and you participate in this, but I'm not gonna drink from that cup until I come for you. So that's what this day is also about. For those of you who prefer, we do have pre-filled cups with a wafer in them and Cam will be available to serve you with these as well. The invitation's been made. The gift has been poured out on you. There is water here for you to remember what your baptism is really about. Crossgates family, come. Let's partake.
Has everyone been served who wishes to be served? Hobson, did you, you receive? Okay. I really wish y'all could see what we see. It's the beauty of your faces filled with light, with a spark of fire over your head, calling you here, proclaiming to you something. You are a child of God. You are one of Jesus's people. You have the presence of God alive in your hearts, filled and overflowing, participating in God's beautiful, redemptive, cosmic plan that we find ourselves in the middle of even today. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to love one another as he loved and to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Every time we proclaim the word of God and hear it proclaimed and participate in it, and every time that we feel the Holy Spirit around, here at Crossgates, we sing a song. And Kim has thankfully agreed to sing my favorite song, I love this song, so I invite us to stand and sing and listen to what is being said. Let us stand and sing, pass it on.
to do something metaphorically that we need to do literally. Take the body of Christ, to be the body of Christ, to go into the world, proclaim its goodness and presence. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Come on, cross gates. Let's go.